Praise God. I'm glad that we serve a God who does miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't you feel him in this place? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, worship him. Let's give him some praise in this house. Hallelujah. We've come to magnify him. Glory to God. We give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost stirring in this place today. Praise God. Praise God. He is here in a mighty way to meet the needs, to bless you. Amen. He's ministering to needs right now. Needs that have never been known to man, that have never been spoken out loud before others. But God knows the need today. And because you've sought Him, He's answering prayers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we give you glory today, Jesus. Glory to God. I want you to turn in your Bibles with me this morning to the Gospel according to John, chapter 6. And today we're going to look at uh, verse, begin in verse 31 and read down through verse, verse 51. And I want to talk to you about miracle manna. Miracle manna. Aren't you glad that God knows what we need and when we need it? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look at verse 31 as we began today. The Bible said, and this is the, this is the Pharisee, some of the Jewish folks talking to Jesus, and they said, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. And then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you. And that word verily, verily, he says it twice. That means pay attention, pay attention. And he says, I say unto you, Moses gave you not the bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. He said, For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then, he, then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Now look down with me, if you will, to verse 47. In verse 47, Jesus once again, he says, Verily, verily, pay attention. He says, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Here's why. He says in verse 48, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. And he said, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, but they're dead. Amen. He's drawing a contrast between the manna in the Old Testament and the bread of life in the New. And then he says in verse 50, he said, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Praise God. Aren't you thankful for the bread of life? For the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. I want to preach to you on the miracle manna. Let's pray together. Father, as we come to you in prayer today, we're thankful for the anointing. We're thankful for the Spirit that's moving in this house right now. And I pray, oh God, that you would uh, once again, God, just take me and use me, God, as you see fit to use me. Lord, I surrender myself to you today to be used by you. And I pray, oh God, that you would speak to every person in this room right now, to every man and to every woman. God, I pray that every, every need would be met. God, especially spiritual needs. Father, we just praise you right now for what you're about to do. In the name of Jesus, we ask it all. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. You know, what you have to realize, when you read a passage like this, it is always important to recognize what surrounds that passage, what happened previously and what follows it. And I don't want to focus too much on what follows it today, but I, wanted to, I do want to call your attention to what precedes it. Because before Jesus began to talk about manna from heaven, before the Jews ever brought it up to Jesus, Jesus had multiplied a boy's lunch. You see, for several thousand people had come out in the wilderness to preach. Now, you've got to get this. They're out in the wilderness to hear Jesus preach. 
And they have followed Jesus out there because Jesus is not only preaching the word, but he's meeting needs. He's touching people where they live. And their needs are being met. And I believe probably many were healed and other great things happened. And, 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 and Jesus, while he's talking to this great crowd just a, a day or two earlier, uh, he, he realizes that they have followed him and they've been following him now for days. They've been following him now for several hours and, and, and even days. And they've had nothing to eat. And Jesus knew that, that he's been feeding them spiritually. But he knew that physically they had to be growing weary. And so Jesus turns to his disciples and he says unto them, let's go get bread and let's give bread to this, to this congregation. Let's give bread to all those that have come. And I believe it was Philip that began to do the calculation. And, and when, he, when he began to calculate how many people were there or think, or, or try to uh, uh, think of how many were there, uh, Philip said, well, you know, in, our, in this present day, it would cost about $8,000 just to give every person there a piece of bread. And, and Philip said, we don't have that kind of money, Jesus. We don't have that kind of money to feed all these people. And there's no place to buy bread, even if we had money to buy it. And, and, and then Andrew comes on the scene. Andrew says, well, he said, I have found this little boy's lunch. He said, his, his mother packed him a couple of pieces of fish and, and a few piece, pieces of bread. But what is that with all this? Group? It's nothing. But you know what Andrew would find out that day? Is that Jesus can take your almost nothing and when he blesses it, when he multiplies it, it becomes something great. Amen? What Jesus was teaching them that day is don't ever think that what you have is not valuable. Because the, all, the, all the Lord is asking is that you, to, you bring what you have and who you are to him. And when he will lay his hand of blessing upon you and multiply your talents and multiply amen, your, your uh, resources and make a great thing happen from it. So God took the little boy's lunch and he held it up and he blessed it and they began to break off pieces and they began to uh, distribute those pieces as they were breaking them off to the crowd. 5,000 men plus their wives and plus their children and they're breaking pieces off and giving it out. And, and here's what we, got, we come to understand that when they're passing this food out, the Bible said that when that crowd had ate to their full, in other words, they were all packed. I mean, they didn't have room for any, anything else. When it was all said and done, the Bible said they went to take up the leftovers. I like the way God does things. I like the fact that God can take a little boy's lunch and multiply it and feed 5,000 men, plus their wives and children, and say, now go gather up the leftovers and let's see what we've got left. So when God got through feeding the crowd of 5,000 men plus their wives and children. But by multiplying a boy's lunch, they begin to pass baskets around. They take up the leftovers, and there are 12 baskets full, full of bread, 12 baskets full of bread left over. You know what Jesus is suggesting us there? 12 is God's number of government. And what I believe the, what I believe the whole thing behind that is God has said, hey, when I get in the middle of something, when you come to trust me, when you come and act in obedience to me and turn your life over to me and come come under my, my rulership, uh, this is what happens. I will multiply it, and I will give you more than you ever believed for. Can somebody shout amen? amen. So the Jews said, said to Jesus, said, Our father did eat manna in the desert. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So what the Jews are saying to Jesus is, before he, after he had multiplied the boys' lunch, they're kind of looking back at that, and they're saying, we need more bread. And, and, and our Father, you, you say that you are, you've come to represent the Father, and you've come to show us the Father, but our Father sent us bread from heaven. And what they're really suggesting is this bread didn't come from heaven. It didn't keep multiplying. And what Jesus is trying to get them to understand is He's talking about a whole different type of bread. He's talking about spiritual bread, and He used the natural bread to teach them a lesson about the spiritual. Can I have any been on that? So they're implying that bread, the bread which Jesus had multiplied, that he had blessed, that he had broken, it, he had multiplied it, uh, just wasn't that big a deal. And Jesus is trying to get them to understand, look, I, I use that whole thing to get you to understand this, that God has sent bread from heaven. And the bread from heaven is Jesus himself. Jesus proclaimed to the world, he said, I am the bread of life. And what he's showing us through those illustrations, 
what he's trying to teach the people by, by, by allowing this uh, 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 to come back up about the manna in the wilderness in the Old Testament is that God, that Jesus is the bread of life, that manna was pointing forward to the day that the bread of life would come and it would do more than sustain the natural man it would sustain the spiritual man and give him the strength to keep going can somebody shout amen so jesus began a powerful explanation he's comparing himself with the manna at, that was sent from heaven that manna no doubt it was sent from heaven when you go back to exodus chapter 16 you'll find script you'll find the story of where jesus sent or where god sent manna from heaven and the reason he sent manna is because they're not that far out of, out of crossing the Red Sea and they're getting hungry now. And they're out in the wilderness and they have nowhere to go to buy food. And, and, and they begin to murmur and they begin to complain. And the fact that they begin to murmur and begin to complain, that they're complaining against Moses... Uh, Moses was God's leader. Moses was a, a, a type of Jesus Christ that would come. And when they began to complain about him, God began to, he said, I, I'll tell you what, Moses, as a result of your prayer, I'm going to send manna down from heaven. He said, it's going to flow out of the heavens like rain. I'm going to rain bread down upon the earth. Isn't that wonderful? And, and, and so every morning when they would get up, they would go out and they and as before the dew would dry from the grass. They would look down and God had sent manna down from heaven. It lay upon the grass. It lay upon the dew. And, and it came from God. And the Lord, they were under instructions. Now, before the sun comes up and before the sun begins to scorch the grass, you are to gather the manna. And you're to take uh, every man will be uh, will gather so much for himself and so much for his family, and you will carry it in. And you're not to gather any more than you can handle for a day. And every day for six days, you're going to do this. Uh, on the seventh, on the sixth day, you will gather enough for two days. Uh, so it takes care of the Sabbath day, the day of rest. Uh, and what God is teaching them is uh, is that daily I will supply your needs. Daily I will be the bread that sustains you. Daily I will be everything. Thing that you need hallelujah praise God praise God I'm trying out a new mic and it's uh between it and my glasses I'm having a time with it amen <laughs> praise God pray for me amen but manna from heaven was it was a miracle because you know it had never rained bread from heaven before amen and once God got through with this dispensation of man we call it that it hasn't rained manna ever. It hasn't rained manna since. So there was a period of time when every day God would rain manna down from heaven. Miraculous. God miraculously supplied bread to His children. When Jesus came, it was more, even more so, a miracle of God, because when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, that little baby. Amen. It was God coming to earth. It was the bread of life coming to earth. And Jesus said, "You eat of this bread." And, and it's going to take care of that hunger that you have, that spiritual hunger. He said, and you won't be hungry anymore. You won't be searching anymore. Glory to God. And, and, and we're going to talk about that a, few, a little bit more in just a moment. But Jesus makes it clear. He said, Moses did not give you the bread. God gave you that bread. It came from heaven. It is a miracle of God. Man did not give us salvation. Man cannot save us. Man cannot redeem us. Man could not die in our place. For, therefore, God sent His only begotten Son that, that down to this earth that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? Come on, give Him a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is the bread of life. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus is the bread of life. Make no mistake about it, Jesus is the bread of life. And the manna in the Old Testament was pointing to the bread of life that was going to come in the New. Let's look at the place and the time of the gift. If you look back at Exodus chapter 16, and look at verse 14, if you will. The Bible said in verse 14, said, And when the dew that lay, upon, uh, that, that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoar frost or the grayish white frost on the ground. And, and, and so they were to gather that, that uh, manna and they were to eat it in the wilderness. And, and the fascinating thing about manna, did you know the name manna is, what is it? Manna means, what is it? And the Bible tells us, especially in the book of Exodus, 
that when the children of Israel went out to gather the manna, they didn't know what it was. When they ate of it, it didn't taste like anything else they'd ever tasted. The texture of it was totally different than anything else they'd ever had. And so they had nothing on earth to compare it to. And so they said, this is manna, this is what it is. We don't know what, we, we can't point to anything else on the earth and say, that's what this is. So they called it, what is it? And, and some theologians have suggested to us that, that manna, even though the Bible said it was like a wafer, and it tasted kind of like honey, that it was very sweet, uh, that, that what is it would taste like whatever they wanted that day. If they were hungry for steak, it might taste like steak. If they were hungry for sweet potatoes, uh, with, with, all the, with all the dressing, it might taste like sweet potatoes with all the cinnamon and all that kind of stuff put on top of it. If they were, you know, and so you get, my, you get what I'm talk, trying to tell you. What is it became whatever they needed? And can I tell you that's what God does through Jesus Christ? Amen. He sent us the bread of life, and He's like that. What is it? He becomes everything that we need. Today, I may need healing. He's healer. Tomorrow I may, de- I may need deliverance. He's my deliverer. But I'm telling you in all things in every pl- everything I find myself involved in, Jesus is my all in all. Come on somebody shout amen. The timing of the sin of the bread. It was sent while the people murmured. It was sent while they complained. So what does that tell us? Well it wasn't a, a favor that they had earned from God. It was an unmerited favor because they had, they had not done one thing to deserve this bread. They were murmuring, they were complaining against God and against God's leader, but God was still merciful and He sent down bread. Amen? Come on, somebody shout amen. I know we got a lot going on today, but listen, nothing could be more important than the Word of God. So hear me today. Get in here with me. Amen? Praise God. It's the unmerited favor. It's not earned. It wasn't something that they deserved. It was not something that they had somehow earned. But God said, I'm going to give you the bread anyway. And every day, regardless of their actions, God rained down manna from heaven. Amen. In fact, it was such a big thing that God told him. He said, now, I want you to, he told Moses, he said, I want you to go gather a jar of that manna. And I want you to fill that jar and you're going to save that manna and that manna is going to serve as a memorial for the generations to come. Isn't that great? And you know what they did with that jar of manna? When they got the Ark of the Covenant they took the Ark of the Covenant and they put that jar of manna inside the Ark. They along with the, the rod of Moses that budded or the rod of Aaron that, that continued to bud and, and, and along with the tablets of the law they put that in the Ark of the Covenant they had the word, they had the bread, and they had the rod that continued to bud. All of that inside the Ark of the Covenant. What is God saying? He said, hey, is, I want you to remember. I want you to remember that I gave you bread when you were hungry. I want you to remember that I sustained you when you were in the wilderness, when you are enjoying the promised land, when you are enjoying the land of milk and honey. I want you to remember that when you were on the wilderness journey, I took care of you and I provided for you. And I'm here to tell you, children of God, amen, I believe the Lord has given us something as a memorial. In fact, when we get to heaven, uh, the only thing that we're going to find man-made in heaven are the scars in the hands and the feet of Jesus and the side of Jesus. And I think, I think when we look at those scars, God is going to say, hey, I sustained you when you were in the wilderness. I sustained you when you were living in the world. I kept you when you were living in the world. I have provided a way of salvation for you. Come on, give him a hand clap of praise, if you will. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. It laid upon the ground. This manna came, it laid upon the ground. Why? Because I, I think it goes back to the fact that Jesus came meek and lowly. This manna would point towards Jesus, the bread of life. And when Jesus came, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29, he said, invitation to all of us he said take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls I like what Jesus said he said I am meek and lowly and what Jesus was declaring is I didn't come with fanfare and I didn't come with trumpets and I didn't come riding on on some plush chariot And when I walked into your midst to meet your needs, I didn't walk in like I'm some great somebody. But I came in meek and lowly. 
because I wasn't, but Jesus let us know he didn't come to earth to draw attention to himself, but he came to point men to the Father. Amen? He came to magnify the Father, and Jesus went a step further, and he said, when the Holy Ghost comes, who I'm going to pray that God will send you when I return to heaven, he said, he's going to show you me. Amen? Amen? So Jesus came to reveal the Father. The Holy Ghost came to reveal, to magnify the Son. Amen? Look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. Speaking of Jesus, Paul said, But Jesus made, him, made himself of no reputation, and he took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Hallelujah. Let's talk about the nature of the bread for a moment. Again, it's called manna. That's what the Israelites called it, manna. What is it? We don't know what it is. There's nothing else on earth to compare to it. You can't compare Jesus to anything else. There's no other religion that you can compare him to. There's no other religious leader that comes close to Jesus. I'm telling you, that manna did not taste like anything else they'd ever ate. The texture of that manna was not like anything else they'd ever put to their lips. And I'm telling you, that's the way Jesus is. He's unlike any other prophet. He's unlike anything else ever been tried. But He is the only thing that gives us life. Amen. Praise God. And the Bible said, they know not what it was. They know not what it was. They don't know what to call it. I don't know what it is, but it's good. You know, I don't understand everything about salvation. Do you? Sometimes people want to ask questions, and, and it's all right to ask questions, and the Bible has most of the answers. But there are some things about God's plan of salvation that we just won't fully understand until we stand before God. And then what we see through a glass darkly will be opened up to us. Amen. But what I want to declare to you today, when people say, well, can you describe it? It's, it's so great, I can't describe it. When Paul began to talk about heaven, he said, you know, there's nothing else like it. I don't know how to tell you about heaven. And that's kind of the same thing about Jesus. Jesus is so wonderful. I'll do my best to describe him, but he does so much for me. He's done so much for my life. I don't know how to put it all in words. Amen. Is that how he's been to you? Praise God. Exodus 16, verse 15. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? And for they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given, has given you to eat. God's given you bread. Thank God He didn't give it to them and say, But don't you eat it. I know it smells sweet. I know it looks good. But don't you eat it. Don't you put it to your lips. Thank God he gave it to them to eat. When, Jesus sent, when, when God sent his son, Jesus Christ, he sent him that we would partake of him. Amen. Boy, today would have been a great day to do communion, wouldn't it? Amen. Praise God. That bread is a type of incarnation. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, Paul says to Timothy, he said, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit seen of angels preached unto the gentiles believed on in the world and received up into glory this speaks of jesus coming to earth and jesus came he preached and people saw him he did miracles before them and, and, and he was the bread of life right in front of them and many partook of that bread and they lived you know what i don't think you can find anybody anywhere that's ever received Jesus that would say, I regret what I did. But I run across people all the time. I, many times over the years I've come across people who regretted making decisions outside of Christ. But I've never found anybody that said, I wish I'd never received Christ as my Savior. They're just not out there. Because He's the greatest thing, amen? This, this, this wafer that was sent down, it was small. Exodus 16, verse 14 said, There lay a small round thing, which means, you know, it was, it was to, to the eye to look at it. It was small, and it might even seem insignificant to some people. You had to gather quite a bit of it up to make, to make something. But, but so the people were involved. They had to go out, and they had to gather the bread. If you didn't go out and gather the bread, you just didn't eat. You had to go out daily and gather the bread. What did Jesus teach his disciples to pray? 
And give us this day our, our daily bread. Boy, when you, when you say that, you said a mouthful. When you say, give us this day our daily bread. Because that manna, that what is it? It may be medicine that, need, that brings healing to your body. It may be nur- more than nourishment to your spirit. That what is it is whatever you need for that day. You may have physical needs. You may have emotional needs. You may have financial needs. You may have, ha- and all of us have spiritual needs. What is manna? What is it? It's whatever I need it to be. Amen. God's got to answer. Am I, am I getting through to you? Amen. Anybody enjoy what I'm saying to you today? Amen. Thank God for the manna that God sent from heaven. Amen. Praise God. It was small and, and, and it wasn't a big way for you. you had to gather a lot of them up. But now we compare that to Isaiah 53 and verse 3. And the prophet Isaiah said, he said, talking about Jesus 700 and something years before the birth of Jesus, Isaiah said, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. What Moses is saying is, as we looked at it, And and it just wasn't that attractive. At first, it didn't look that attractive to us. He said he was despised and rejected by men. When Jesus came, I mean, he didn't come as a king at that time. He came as the Lamb of God. He came as a Savior. And so he didn't come with all the fanfare and everything I mentioned earlier. Jesus came meek and lowly. And when people looked at him, they thought, I, that's not what I'm looking for. A lot of people looked at Jesus, and, and, and when Jesus, and, and when, he, when, he, when he preached about the Messiah, and when John the Baptist would go out and say, hey, this is the Messiah, he, he's here. A lot of folks would look at Jesus and say, hey, he's just a common guy. He's just that carpenter's son from Nazareth. Nothing, nothing great about him. And he wasn't what many of them were looking for. I'm telling you, amen, Jesus Jesus comes meek and lowly. He's not what some people are looking for. You know, there's a lot of people out there today that are looking for a church, that are looking for a religious leader that's, you know, that's dressed to the T and that's driving the fancy car and that's going to come before them and say, now, if you'll come to Jesus, if you'll join our church, if you'll you'll buy into our doctrine, God will make you rich. You can wear the Rolex. You can drive the fancy car. You can live in the big house. And that's what some folks are, to, are after today. But I'm telling you, I, I'm thankful that the Bible said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these other things will be added unto you. You may not ever drive the Lincoln. You may not ever own the Cadillac. You may not ever own the Humvee if they still make them. But what I come to declare to you is this, is that God will certainly take care of you. God will meet your physical needs. He will meet your material needs. But first, He's going to meet the spiritual needs. Because I can get to heaven as a poor man, but I can't get to heaven without Christ. Oh, somebody shout amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So who is it that gives the manna? Look back at verse 15, Exodus 16, verse 15. The latter part of that. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Glory to God. Here's the thing you have to understand. God gave them the bread. They had nowhere to buy it. And if they could have found a place that sold it, they would not have had enough money to buy it. Because when you're talking about what is it, that's whatever you need it to be. How do you put a price tag on that? Amen. Anybody follow me? So, so you see the value of manna, the value of the bread of life, the value of what is it? Amen. Whatever you need it to be. Glory to God. I have run across a few tools that they've made. And, and, and these tools were supposed to be multiple, serve multiple purposes. And I have found in my own personal life that there's nothing like getting the tool that's meant for the job and just use it. Rather than go get some multifunction tool and try to use it for this and that and the other. Because in my, in, in, my, in my way of doing things, the tool that's made for the job always works better. And I've come to declare to you 
the what is it is the exact thing you need whatever you're facing in life amen praise God aren't you thankful for that today that manna came down in the darkness God allowed the manna to fall in the darkness just before the Sun began to rise and I've come to tell you we live in a sin darkened world but the bread of life is still is still among us the bread of life is being preached the bread of life is being taught. The bread of life is being shared. And it's being shared in a world that's filled with darkness because of sin. But I want you to know, day is coming. The day is coming. Hallelujah. Praise God. Daylight is coming. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. I like what the Apostle Paul said about the bread of life. He said, Thanks be unto God for this unspeakable gift. You can't describe it. You don't know how to tell people all there is about it. But he said, thank God for this incredible gift. Thank God for this unspeakable gift that we have. Amen. God's better than anything you've ever got a hold of. You know, if I, I, I Peggy likes to watch the HTV channel. And every now and then they'll give a house away somewhere. A house that they've redone or a house that they built and it's got all the newest equipment in it and all those kind of things. And I used to register every time they'd, you know, give one away. I'd, boy, I made sure I got my name in a hat multiple times. And I thought, wouldn't it be great to win that? And I could just imagine myself winning that house, moving into it, and trying to tell everybody back home what the house looked like. Boy, you wouldn't believe how that new bed sleeps. You, know, you would never believe what that new refrigerator can do. You, you wouldn't believe how, that new stove. You wouldn't believe that new uh, 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 patio out back. You just wouldn't believe the, the, the garage and all the stuff they put in it. Think about that for a moment. And that's kind of what the Apostle Paul is describing about this bread of life. Man, there's so, much, so many good things. How can I tell you about it all? There's so much good about Jesus. There's so much good about the Son of God. There's so much good about the bread of life. How could I ever describe all the things that make him so wonderful? The purpose of that manna. You look at Exodus chapter 16, verse 12. And, and, the, and uh, the Bible said, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel speak unto them, saying, At evening, evening you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. You shall know that I'm the Lord your God. In the mornings, you're going to be filled with bread, and you're going to know that I am the living God. Praise God. I'm the Lord your God. I'm the one who gave you the bread. Praise God. Praise God. That manna came to save us from death. That manna in the wilderness, wilderness literally saved the Israelites from starving to death. God gave them this what is it that would, meet, that would solve the desire of their heart. Their, that would that would satisfy their taste buds. That would become whatever they needed it to be for that day. I mean, they enjoyed it. Praise God, and the Lord will do the same for you and me today. Amen. Sweet like honey. That bread was sweet like honey. Did you know that God doesn't give us bitterness? When God gives you something, He doesn't give you something that's bitter. He doesn't give you something that you cannot enjoy. He could have made that bread bitter. He could have said, I'm going to make it bitter. And every time, it's going to help you live, but you're, going to, you're not going to like eating it. No, he didn't do that. The Bible said it was, taste, it was sweet like honey. And that's the way Jesus is to our lives. He brings sweet things. He brings sweetness into our lives. In fact, he erases the bitterness that this world has given us. I'm telling you, this world has a lot of bitter, bitter things to offer us. Amen. And for Jesus, the Bible talks about Jesus, how he drank the bitter cup. He took the bitterness that was ours. He took the death sentence that belonged to us. He took the penalty of our sins upon himself. And the one who knew no sin went to Calvary and died in our place so that you and I could be set free. Come on, shout amen. I've had a lot of bitter experiences in this life. Amen. I can look at a lot, a lot of dark days, a lot of dark times, but not a one of them came from God. Amen. God may have allowed them. 
God may have allowed them to come my way, but praise God, they were not sent by Him. If He allowed them, He allowed them for a purpose and a reason. And when, it was, and when that purpose was served, God said, Now I'm going to give you joy for your mourning. I'm going to give you, I'm going to let you rejoice and wipe away your tears. Thank God for what God gives us. Amen. You have to gather that bread for yourself, though. You can't eat somebody else's bread and live. You've got to partake of the bread for yourself. Everybody, every man, every woman here today, you're not going to get to heaven because of what your parents have done. You're not going to get to heaven because your parents are good people or members of the church or, or, or they ate the bread of life. But if you get to heaven, if you receive life eternal, you're going to get there because you ate the bread for yourself. You went out and said, hey, God's put the bread in front of me. Now I'm going to gather it in. Amen. How do you gather that bread? Read the Word of God. Amen. Receive Christ. Invite Christ into your day every day. How do you receive that bread? Not only by reading the Word, not only by praying and inviting Jesus into your daily life, but also by, by, by attending church and hearing about Him. The Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, it's a daily thing. We come to Christ and we live. We reject Christ and it's only death. Amen? Moses prophesied to the children of Israel. And what did he prophesy? He said, there's another prophet greater than I am. He's coming and he's going to give you the bread of life. He's going to bring to you the bread of life, and you're going to eat that bread and never die. Glory to God. Praise God. He said, and you need to give heed unto him. That, that person is Jesus. Would you stand with me? i got to tell you something else very important. I want to touch on, I, I mentioned, mentioned it earlier, and I want to go back to it for just a moment. And that's the fact that they had to take that little pot of manna, that little jar of manna, and they were to keep it, and it was to serve to show to generations to come behind them that this is what God did for us in the wilderness. But you know, there came a time when the Ark of the Covenant was lost. There came a time when the Ark and all of its content was lost. They don't know where it's at today. There's been a lot of speculation. There's been some guessing. And there's been some people that thought maybe they found it, saw a glimpse of it, digging some, some tunnels under Jerusalem. But as far as I know, the Ark of the Covenant's not been found. And the content of it's not been found. What happened? When the Israelites turned their back on Jesus, the bread of life, it was like God said, you don't want the bread, I'm going to hide the bread from you. You don't want the bread, you, you refuse to see the bread, you're not going to see it. And so that manna has been in hiding. But I've come to tell you, God's not through with the Jewish people. Amen. God's not through with the men and women gathered in this room today, and God's not through with, with Israel. There's coming a day when the bread of life is coming to Israel again. There's coming a day when they're going to eat of the bread, and they're going to be saved. Amen. Many of them already have been, but there's coming a day when the nation is going to be transformed. Praise God. But right now is the day of salvation. Right now, you can eat the bread of life. And live forever. Have you ate of that bread? Well, I, well, I want you right now, while you stand here, to just begin to think on the words that you've heard today. And if you're lost and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, I want to give you this opportunity to come to the altars and receive Him. Receive that bread. Hallelujah. Around these altars, there's fresh bread hot off the ovens of heaven. And if you want to come and partake of it, this is your opportunity. Would you come? If there's a one here today that's lost, there's the one here today that's away from God. I want you to, I want to invite you to come with me to this altar. I'll meet you here. I'll pray with you. I'll help you any way I can. Have you gathered the bread? Have you gathered that bread? Have you partaken of that bread of life for yourself? I know, I know, I know that right now, right now in the sound of my voice, God's dealing with somebody. It's up to you. Will you come? Will you come? Hallelujah. While the music continues to play, I'm going to give you just a few more moments. Hallelujah. Still time for you to come. 
Glory to God.